Okay, so here we're going to talk about our fungal agents that are going to cause superficial, um, which basically means non-invasive, they're more cosmetic, um, but they do cause problems for people. Um, their, uh, just their quality of life can decrease because of these superficial mycoses. And then there are also cutaneous mycoses, which are going to um, also cause problems in mostly the skin and areas like that. So we're going to talk about some fungi here. We're going to talk about our Malazia, Furfur, Horatia, Wernicke, um, Trichosporum, and Pedia Horta. We're also going to talk about dermatophytes and understanding what genre are going to be mostly associated and how to tell the difference between those genres. And then finally, fungal keratitis. So some interesting facts. So ringworm is not caused by a worm. It's caused by our dermatophytes. So it's not parasitic. It is fungal in origin. Uh, Microsporum canis is going to be common in cats. And this microsporum can be transmitted to dogs, which then are usually the source that gets transmitted to humans. Uh, sporothrix is going to be in our plants, especially in rotting plants, um, organic soils. And then the fungus is going to get introduced into our tissues through a cut in the skin. Um, so these are going to produce non-healing ulcers on the skin surface. And again, commonly with um, people who work with plants, our gardeners, um, our farmers, our green house people, they are they will be potentially exposed to that. So dermatophytosis is um, caused as a disease caused by dermatophytes. Um, and so you basically have three categories of dermatophytosis and it's based on where these uh, fungi are. So we have our geophilic uh, fungi that live in the soil. So these are very occasional um, infections in humans, not very common. We have those that are zoophilic, which means they are going to commonly infect animals and then can be transmitted to humans through the interactions with those animals. And then they're anthropophilic, and these are the ones that are going to be transmitted from person to person, and so these are going to be the most common. And the most common of these are Trichophyton rubrum and Trichophyton tom serenus. Both of these are going to cause most of the dramatophyte infections. Now the dramatophytes are a fungus that like um, warm and moist areas. So we're going to find most of these infections in tropical and subtropical areas, even in subtropical and tropical areas of the United States, such as the South. So our superficial mycoses, again, these are the ones that are going to cause um, non-invasive, so it's not life-threatening. However, they are very cosmetic and people do have a loss of quality of life, um, feeling like they look different type of thing. And so we have our Malazia furfur, which is also referred to as Tinea versicolor. And this is going to be either hypopigmented, which is shown here, is a, a lighter pigment on the skin, or hyperpigment, so it can be both dark or light. Um, typically, these are going to be on the upper trunk and shoulders, uh, so that's the most common place to find them. Um, they also can be on other areas, such as the face and neck. Horita wereneki is tinea nigra, and this is going to be brown to black macules. So here's an example of a brown. And these are going to be usually on the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. And so it's different than the tinea versicolor as far as the location as well as the, um, the coloring. Now, some that are going to infect hair follicles are going to be our trichosporin species. And so these are going to be um, swellings of the actual fungal agent on the hair shafts. So white pedra is shown here with these um, sort of balls of white. And then so these are going to grow along the hair shaft. And typically, trichosporin is going to be um, also associated with groin or axilla. And then Pedia horatia, her horta, is going to form black pedra. And these are going to be, again, the same thing as the white pedra, but they're going to be black. And so these small black nodules that grow along the hair, and usually these are associated with the scalp hairs. 
So dramatophytes, we have three genera that are going to cause um, our most of our cutaneous fungal infections. And these are going to be our trichophyton, we have microsporum, and epider epidermophyton. Those are the three genera possible for these cutaneous fungal infections. Now all the dermatophytes have the ability to um, invade skin, hair, or nails. They break down keratin, so dermatophytes break down keratin. So any tissue that has keratin, they can invade and infect. So it's skin and things like that. And then you're going to see that you have uh, tinea capiticus, which is going to be a disease that affects the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the scalp. Um, tinea barbara is beard. We have corpus. Corporus is going to be smooth or glabaceous skin. Cruzi is groin. Pedius is foot. Um, Eugenium is nails. And so make sure for these that you understand the type of disease, the location they are, and some of the examples. Trichophyton, as you can see, is going to be causing many of these diseases. And microsporum and epidermal phyton are going to be very specific. So now how do we tell the difference? So these are the three dramat dramatophyte genre. We have our trichophyton, and these are going to give us macro canidia. And remember, canidia are going to be those um, naked spores. So we get my macro canidia, and these are large and complex canidia, which are going to have very smooth walls. And then for our microsporum, we're going to have micro canidia or rough walled macro canidia. And then for our epidermophyton, it's only going to be macroconidia as well. So dermatophytosis has a presentation again of that ringworm. So you get these nice rings and they can have pus associated with them. Um, they are also are going to be associated with allergies and allergic reactions. We have something called the ID reaction, which is an acute dermatitis. This can be caused by things other than um, our dermatophytes, but dermatophytes can cause them as well. One of the things about the ID reaction is that you're going to have a presentation of this dermatitis at a site distant from the actual infection of the, with the ag agent. So typically you might have a dermatophyte infection of your foot, and then you're going to have an ID reaction somewhere else on your body, your back. You're going to get um, a rash or something. A dermatitis type of, um, of reaction. And so the rash with respect to the ID reaction will be itchy with bumps and can have blisters as well. Now nail infections are going to be a chronic infection with a dermatophyte and it typically is going to be thickened, raised, um, deformed, and so these can again lead to loss of quality of life because an individual might not be able to wear their shoes as well. They might have to wear flip-flops or sandals. And so even though it does, it's not going to kill them, it can impact their overall life. Now, diagnosis of dermatophytes are going to be fungal hyphae in the skin by direct microscopes or finding them by direct microscopes in the hair or nail samples. Uh, you will want to try to isolate the organism culture. Um, there also is a wood light so a wood light is a, um, a light that you can shine on hair, and if it has a fluorescent green-yellow appearance, then that would be positive for a dermatophyte. Now, some notes about dermatophytosis, especially with respect to snail infections, is that just because a fungus is there doesn't mean it's the cause of the actual disease, um, because fungi are everywhere, so you always have to take into consideration that it could be an environmental um, contaminant. Bacteria and yeast, especially candida, can infect nails as well. And it's important to know which one is infecting them because if you're going to have a uh, mold infection, you're going to have to give an, um, an antifungal agent. A bacteria, obviously an antifungal agent would not work. A yeast, um, you'd have to treat as well. So you, it's important to know what is causing it so that you give the right treatment.
Um, and again, damage to nail beds can be superficial, and this can be caused by a fungus, but it might not be the primary infection, so it might be um, a bacteria infection, a staph infection, for example. It is also important to recover fungus from multiple cultures because, again, they are contaminants in the environment, and you just want to make sure that you have the accurate diagnosis. Now, finally, we have fungal keratitis, and so this is infection of the cornea. Again, the fungal agent is going to be less common than bacteria or viruses, so again, virus is the most common. Um, bacteria will be second, and then if, if you get treat for those and you still have, the, your patient still has the infection, then you have to start thinking about fungal. The most common molds that are going to cause this, again, comes back to our aspergillus. That's that um, um, normal environment uh, fungus. Also, fusarium species can cause this. Typically, these are going to be introduced following trauma. Our most common yeast is going to be candida, and this is part of the normal flora. So this is going to be associated with um, just being part of the person's uh, normal flora and then the person having some sort of um, treatment such as your corticosteroid use, eye surgery, uh, ulceration to allow that normal flora um, yeast to get into the cornea.